Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, we call to mind our sins and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people of the world. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, our mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten the Son, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son of God, you take away the sins of the world, have no sins. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have no sins. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. In those days, the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the sons of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The people are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are rebellious, they will know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy. Our, our eyes are on the Lord our God. God till he shows us his mercy. To you have I lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, like the eyes of slaves, on the hand of their lords. Our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy. Like the eyes of a servant on the hand of her mistress, so our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy. Our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed, all too full is our soul with the scorn of the arrogant, the disdain of the proud. Our eyes are on the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, to keep me from being too elated by the abundance of revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it should leave, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I will all the more gladly boast of my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get all this? What is the wisdom given to him? What mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands upon a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine, if you will, that you are a visionary archbishop campaigning for human rights in your country. Not only does your vision rooted in the gospel cause you to be hated and feared by the dictatorial regime, parts of your own church, including most of its bishops, have turned against you. Worse still, there is a strong sense that both have poisoned your reputation with the current, very anti-communist pope in Rome. The latter, having been swayed by their allegations of your communist sympathies, or very least, that you are naively furthering the cause of Marxism in your country. Imagine, too, that after your death, although many at home have called you a saint since you were martyred by a paramilitary death squad, and although you have already been listed as a martyr by the Lutheran and Anglican Church, the latter having erected a statue of you over one of the doors of Westminster Abbey, It takes more than 30 years for your church to recognize it. I'm referring, of course, to Archbishop Oscar Romero of El Salvador, Saint Oscar, as of a few years ago, officially. But for many, since after his death on March 24th, 1980, he was San Oscar de las Americas, Obispo y Martiro, Saint Oscar of the Americas, Bishop and Martyr. But I could, with a few changes to the biography, be speaking of many such figures around the world. 
including Archbishop Dennis Hurley here in South Africa. There is a dynamic in such situations, with obvious variables such as martyrdom or marital state, denomination or nature of ministry allowed. One, these folk all have the fire of the prophet in their hearts and urge to proclaim the good news of God's reign. How they do it may vary, how they speak too, but the message of renewal, the message of Ezekiel, Paul, and Jesus is the same. Second, they experience opposition, misunderstanding, and attack from various sides, but not least from within their own community. How dare he? I thought he was one of us. I know her family, where she grew up. I cannot believe she's speaking like that. This may even come from within one's own religious community, who are quite often cozy with the old-time religion, cozy with its relationship to the state, or simply find the often harsh words of the prophet unsettling, subversive, or heretical. Strangely enough, it's often those outside these circles who first value the voice and the vision of the prophet. They're honored and acknowledged for their work outside their homes, their congregations, and even their countries. Meanwhile, it is often the case that the prophet is driven to the margins of their society. Third, many prophets experience what Paul calls a thorn in the flesh. Apart from the thorns in the flesh provided by opponents, which at that ex extreme might end up as an actual sword or bullet in the flesh, this might be something internal to the prophet, a weakness of character, a fault, even a struggle with sin itself. This could, this could be an addiction, a psychological struggle with feelings of pointlessness, even doubts about one's mission. On the latter, such doubt is possibly a good thing. After all, the line between a fanatic and a prophet is in the latter's case the readiness to ask, could I be wrong? Now, no one really knows what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. There's loads of speculation about among biblical scholars, but the truth is, we don't know. But it really doesn't matter. The fact that Paul, who was nothing if not confident in his sense of God's mission for him, and by extension, almost every prophet before and after him, had to endure some kind of obstacle. This should be a source for us of hope. To us, in our calling to ministry in whatever shape or form it takes, in our calling to prophecy, how many of us in the course of our work have not, in the very least, asked ourselves, what's the point? As everything we do seems to get harder, as people, including those close to us, seem to question or second-guess us, or simply write us off before we start, because, in their words, we know who he or she is like. Today, we have a few models to look to with hope. Ezekiel who knows that his mission will be an uphill battle. Paul, who accepts his thorn in the flesh and carries on regardless, filled with hope. And Jesus, who finds no success at home, who reminds us that the prophet is unwelcome in his own family and country, and then proceeds to take his mission further to the whole wide world. They and others who transcend the obstacles should remind us that we not only can continue in our mission, but that we must. Let us then, as a community of friends of God and prophets, profess the faith we all share by saying together the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Having professed this faith that we all share, let us bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. We pray that all Christians may embrace their particular mission to, to proclaim in word and in action the reign of God in the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all prophets in our time that whatever opposition they encounter within their communities, within their institutions, within themselves, they may persevere in their vision. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that prophets may also have the strength to question themselves as they proceed, and they may all learn to distinguish the prophets in our midst from the mere fanatics. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. At this time, we pray especially for all those who witness to the reign of God in deeds by their involvement in caring for those suffering from COVID-19, particularly those working to roll out the vaccine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For your own prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, we bring before you all the prayers we make, spoken and unspoken. We ask you to receive them and answer them according to your will. We make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. It's Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. It's just the God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of our name, for our good and for all God's holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Booty, our Archbishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter out of my roof, but I do say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, when you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our Mass is ended. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.